Okay, to, here are the notes for today, Tuesday, October the 3rd. Our first learning target for today was, I can determine the possible rational zeros of a polynomial function. I can determine the possible rational zeros of a polynomial function. We are on page 23 in your notebook, page 23, it looks like this particular page right here, page 23, and we are looking at number 3. We'll start with number 3. And the directions for number 3 says, tell the maximum number of real zeros that each function may have. List the possible rational zeros of each function. Do not attempt to find the zeros. So you just want to list. So I'm going to talk about the maximum number of zeros. So on number 3, I have f of x equals negative 2 x to the 8th minus x to the 7th plus 8x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus x plus 3. We want to determine the maximum number of zeros this function can have. The max number of zeros. The degree of this particular function is 8. That is an 8 right there. So that is 8. Now this particular function does not have a specific name since it's degree 8. It's just called polynomial. Now I'm going to find the possible. Keyword there, possible zeros. This is not the for real zeros. It could just be possible zeros. Well, to find the possible zeros, you take the factors of the last term. Factors of the last term. That's factors of 3 and then factors of the first term. So factors of 3, that's plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. Remember, factors are what multiply to give you that number. The only two numbers are 1 and 3. For negative 2, is plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. Now, to find the possible zeros, you take the factors of the this, this top part and divide it by the factors of each of these. So, you take the factors of the last one divided by the factors of this. So, I'm going to take this number. I'm going to take both these numbers, divide it by 1, then come back and divide both these numbers by 2. So, 1 divided by 1 is... 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. So I took this divided by this, this divided by that. Now I'm going to go back and divide each of them by this 2. 1 divided by 2 is plus or minus 1 half. 3 divided by 2 is plus or minus 3 halves. So those are my possible zeros. My possible zeros. I have 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. Does it mean it necessarily goes through? We just said if it, if it does not mean that it goes through it. It just says a possible going through it. Any one of these points right here is possible to cross the x-axis. All right, let's look at number four. We have f of x equals negative 6x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus x plus 1. Okay? The maximum number of zeros. The maximum number of zeros is 5. Now we didn't talk about this while ago. Why is it 5? Well there's a theorem called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra that states a polynomial function of degree n. Whatever the degree is, that's how many zeros it has. So if it has 5, it has a maximum of 5 zeros. So now I'm going to take the factors of the last term. Factors of 1 is plus or minus 1. That's it. Then the factors of the last first term. Factors of 6 is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. Now, to get my list of possible, this is where it could possibly cross the x-axis. You have to take your y and divide it by each of these bottom ones. It's the take your factors of the last one divided by factors of the rock, first one. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 6 is 1 6. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 1 divided by 3 is plus or minus 1 third. So take the factors of the last, divide by factors. That's why I put the first one on top. Remember, I'm going to take this and divide it by these. So that goes on to our first learning target from the day. I can determine the possible zeros, possible rational 
rational. Remember, rationals, rational numbers, rational zeros, the any number you can express in the form of the fraction. These are all can be expressed in fraction or in fraction form. You said, Mr. Chester, what if it crossed that square root of 2? Well, square root of 2 is not rational. That's an irrational number, so that would not be in our list. This is the possible rational. All right, our next learning target, and we're moving to number 6 on our examples, was I can determine the zeros of the polynomial function. So the first learning target was the possible. And I'm going to show you how to use the possible in a minute. But now we're going on. We want to find them. Go on to number 6 on page 23 of your notes. You have f of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x plus 2. It has a degree 3. This is a cubic function. That means the maximum number of zeros it could have is 3 because of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay? So first, our directions do say find the possible. We're going to, we're going to do that again. Find the possible zeros. Factors of the last one, 2, is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Factors of the first one, 3, is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. We're going to take the factors of the last one divided by the factors first. So 1 divided by 1 is plus or minus 1. 2 divided by 1 is plus or minus 2. Now we say 1 divided by 3 is plus or minus 1 third. 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. So there's my possible zeros. Now guys, We've been finding zeros for the last week or so. What makes this problem different from the other ones, if you look at this original cubic, it's four terms. I can't factor it. I can't do anything with that, so you have to have another strategy in your toolkit. What do I do when this polynomial does not factor down, or I cannot use the quadratic formula? Well, this is the strategy you use. You need to graph this function using your graphing calculator. Okay? And I'm going to graph it now. I go to y equals. Look, I already have it in my calculator. I'm going to graph this function. When you graph this function, it clearly crosses at negative 1. So that is a 0. You know for a fact that's a 0. Now, one way you could check it, if you went to the second table, if you go to negative 1 here, I'm going to highlight negative 1. Does negative 1 make it 0? Yes, that's how you check to make sure it's a 0 if you need to. I went to second table right here. Sorry. Now, back at my graph. So I know. So I'm going to go ahead and make me a list of zeros over here. These are my actual zeros. And I said negative 1 was. Okay? Now, I'm going to use what I just got off my graph to break this one down. 3, negative 4, negative 5, and 2. I'm using synthetic division to break it out. Bring that negative 1 from my 0 list. When you do this, you should get a remainder of 0 because negative 1 was a 0. It should be a factor of this polynomial. Now, let's rewrite this as quadratic because I started with cubic. That's going to be 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. Okay, I got something I can work with now. I can either A, factor it, or B, use the quadratic formula. Well, it's in the format variable, squared, variable, no variable. So it looks like it can be factored using bust them up. So let's look at that. I'm going to come over here. 3x squared, it's got to multiply to give you 6, add to give you negative 7. That's negative 6 and negative 1. Group that off. I can take a 3x out of this first one, that leaves x minus 2. Take a, take a 1 out, sorry, that leaves x minus 2. So I'm left with 3x minus 1 and x minus 2. 
I want to set both of those equal to zero. Well, when you set this equal to zero, you should get one third. So that's a zero. Then x minus two equals zero, you should get x equals two. So your zeros, you can have more than three, I have exactly three. It crosses at negative one, it crosses at one third and two. And looking back at your picture, that's exactly, it's a good representation. All right, let's look at number seven. Y equals two X cubed minus five X squared minus four X plus 12. This is a cubic function. It has up to, it will have up to three zeros. That's the max. Now on this particular function, I'm not gonna practice finding the possible because I think we've already practiced finding the possible. I'm just going to find the real. The real. No, I'll go ahead and do the possible for you. Possible zeros. Let me go on and do that for you now. Factors of the last. Factors of 12. Plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 12. Plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 6. Plus or minus 3. Plus or minus 4. Then the factors of 2. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two. Now you're going to teach, take every one least, divide it by the one, come back and divide it by two. So one divided by one is one. Twelve divided by one is twelve. Two divided by one is two. Six divided by one is six. Three divided by one is three. Four divided by one is four. Now go back and divide everything by two. One divided by two is one half. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I already have that. If I already do, I'm going to list them more than once. Okay, going back through it. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 12 divided by 2 is 6. I already have that one. 2 divided by 2, I already have that one. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I already have that one. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I already have two in my group. So those are my possible zeros there. Now I look at my original. I think, can I factor that? I cannot factor that. Now if you can factor that, go for it. That's what you want. But since we cannot factor that, you need to use the toolkit strategy I just taught you. We need to graph this. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 12. Graph it. It clearly, now here, at this one right here, it goes in between lines. So you don't want to use that one, but it clearly touches 2. So I'm going to use that zero. So I'm going to go and make my zero list. Two is a zero. I'm going to break. I'm trying to break this down to a quadratic for either I can factor it or use the quadratic formula. So using two. Two times two is four. It gives me negative one. Two times negative one is negative two. It gives me negative six. Two times negative six gives me negative twelve. Got a remainder zero. That's what I wanted. Now, since this was cubic, I'm going to start by doing quadratic here. 2x squared minus x minus 6. Okay. I'm going to try to factor this if I can. If I can, I'm forced to use quadratic formula. But it appears to be busting up. Got to multiply to give you 12, add to give you negative 1. Well, that's negative 4 and 3, so I can do bust them up. Take a 2x out of this first one. Take a positive 3 out, get x minus 2, 
and 2x plus 3. I'm going to set both of them equal to 0. It gives me x equals 2, and that gives me x equals negative 3 halves. So my other two zeros, well, I already have 2 up here. I already have 2, so I don't need to list it twice. That, that means right there, if it occurs twice, it's multiplicity. Here I'm just going to put 2 and negative 3 halves. So for this particular problem, I could have up to three zeros, but I don't have two, and they're both real, not complex. Now, on your homework sheet you had tonight, it says find the possible, then find the actual. I want to draw your attention to one. I'm not going to work it, but look at number nine. I can factor that by grouping, so I don't need to do the where I type the graph in and pull a zero off of it and then break it down, because you can do this whole thing by factoring, okay? So just make sure you ask yourself those questions. Remember, your homework's this page, and then these on this page, okay? We'll go over this tomorrow.